Afternoon YouTube, it's your boy Leon I'm Tupacula. Welcome to my channel. Like and subscribe if you like my video. Join the channel. You know what I'm saying? And everybody else who's already subscribed, thank you for being subscribed. Thank you for clicking on this video even. I'm about to review the greatest showman, the Hugh Jackman show. <laughs> I heard that he spent all his uh, X-Men Logan money on this movie. And you can kind of tell, but you can kind of tell that it needed more. Because there's some nitpicky stuff about it, honestly. Ah, let's just dive right in. First of all, 21st Century Fox, the most kind of unreliable, you know, production company. Because sometimes they give you a Logan, but sometimes they give you an X-Men Wolverine origin, you know. Or sometimes they give you something like, um... Fantastic Four, the 2015 one, and sometimes they give you movies like Avatar, you know, thanks, but still a great production company, just sometimes they hit or miss too much. First, the opening sequence of this movie was amazing. Like, there's nothing more to say. Like, the silhouette lighting at the beginning with Hugh Jackman singing. First of all, the musical numbers of this movie are phenomenal. Like, they're not too dated, even though it's a period piece, they're not too dated that you're like, oh, oh my God, I can't stand this old timey music. No, it's anybody can find themselves listening to this music, young and old. It's modern. It's also timeless, you know what I'm saying? The opening sequence, the silhouette shot, with the title sequence, The Greatest Showman, just showing you that whole old timey type of silent movie title sequence. You know what I'm talking about if you're a movie buff. Then you got the whole team. It starts with The Greatest Showman, The Circus of P.T. Harmon or Harlan. Harmon, yeah. P.T. Harmon's circus starts with the musical number of that whole sequence already put together them as a, a team seeing it the crowd react everybody seeing him perform being the showman he is in this movie taking the audience attention directing it i like the continuous shot you can tell that it was edited but it was kind of fluent in the sense that it was like your cam the camera was your eyes watching the gravitating performances it was nice some of it was vfx you could tell that's why i say you could have used more money because it was like obvious vfx but it was still an amazing opening sequence then we go to the romance of this movie where you get a young hugh jackman pt and his wife how they met how his father used to make clothes for the family the rich family of the daughter of this rich dude who's clearly an asshole first of all he that bitch slapped the hell out of you young hugh jackman the dude who played young hugh jackman could sing if it is him singing and the girl also if it's her singing they both can't really sing i mean like it's a beautiful love story there's this cool ass transaction shot where it goes from her reading the letter to him reading the letter she sent back which is cool then you really you see that song transform into a time jump of them older as he comes to you know take her hand and they perform then it goes further on after he gets let let go of his job see him have children now tell them this beautiful story i mean this so, this story is so ro romanticized like it's so touching in that sense if you know what i'm saying then you see him try new ventures, try opening a wax museum, didn't pan out. Then you see him remember the woman who helped him out in the street, gave him an apple. At least I think it's a woman who was different, who hid herself and, you know, and he reminded him that people are intrigued by the weird. They still are, but not as much as they were. In this period piece i heard it's a true story so and the true story is not as romantic sized as this movie is it's a beautiful movie 
then you see him start recruiting people from the trapeze artist to the tattoo man to the dog boy to the world's largest man to the irish giant i mean like it's it, it was also a musical number if i'm not mistaken and a beautiful sequence the, the production design of this movie is fantastic you can see it when the money went there in the costume yeah, in the setting, everything. Then you got his relationship with the critic, which I really enjoyed. The relationship with the critic was amazing, in my sense, because it was like both sides were admiring each other, but also they distaste for each other, and it grows into something more towards the end, which I appreciated. That was a great part of the story. There was this savage moment where he was starting to get the spotlight PT, that is, and his daughter was living in a nice house with the ballet slippers that she wanted. Then a few girls make fun of her, then she says the most savage thing to her father. It's like ballet takes hard work and practice, and it's not like the circus, you can't just fake it. I was like, God damn, my daughter's savage. She was cute and bubbly until that moment. Then we go into another character, like that was basically Hugh Jackman's part of the story. Then we start going deeper into other people's side of the story, and the first person we go deep into it, Zac Efron, respected playwright, who doesn't seem too happy. He seems to be drinking most of the time. You see him recruit in this musical number where they both perform. Also has a dope ass transaction shot where you see them dancing at the bar next thing they in the circus and it's just the transaction in itself is amazing then you get that boom moment the love at first sight where Zandaya's eyes Zac Efron's eyes spot each other it's magnificent then they finally introduce them the way she was so sassy with everybody's got a neck Ain't she fucking amazing though? Zandaria, give her props. Spider-Man Homecoming. Casey Undercover. Shake It Up. Frenemies. Her music career. Everything else she's in. Everything else she's gonna be in. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. She's, she's a beautiful soul. A beautiful human being. I mean like, if you don't see it. If you haven't seen the interviews. If you don't follow her life, you should. Like, great talent great future ahead of her you know what i'm saying her and her brother the dynamic was amazing they didn't have that much like dialogue screen time but you saw it by the characters the actors the actress herself they dynamic and the dude who plays her brother i know him from the vanishing of uh sydney hall I know him from the Get Down, he's Black Manta. I'm gonna learn his name one day, but yeah. That was Zandaya Smile though. I'm just gonna put a bunch of Zandaya pictures for y'all to appreciate, you know? And then we get to the moment where they meet the Queen and she's amazed by everybody. And the mini me dude I don't know how to call him or what to call him. I'm not trying to be disrespectful or anything. But he was funny. He was a cool character. I don't know if he was real though. Because there was moments where he was walking weird. And it didn't seem like he was actually walking. Like he was the one walking. It didn't seem real for some moments. Then you have the woman from Mission Impossible. I don't know her name too, but she was amazing. I don't know if she, it's actually her singing, but that's the song she performed. The song she performs. Oh, the way she, if she is lip syncing, the way she lip synced. Like, it was just amazing to behold. I mean, like, yo. Then we got the musical number of the century, led by the bearded woman. That, that, that musical number. Like, I understand why it was Oscar nominated. Did it even win? I don't know. I didn't watch the Oscars this year, but it should have. I mean, like, it should have. I mean, I'm just gonna show a bunch of pictures of that musical number and it was on their face, of course. Then, of course, the 
relationship between Zack and Zendaya, the Disney stars, had to have. Since it was a period piece, understandable, the racism. I mean, like, black people done had it hard, man. Like, from South Africa to America to everywhere else. If, if you had this skin color, or lighter, or darker, you would just, you went through a hell of a time. I mean, like, you still are. Which is sad enough that you can, it's relatable to today. Like, you know what I'm saying? Then you had the musical number after the whole parents fiasco, the whole racist, like dating their help. You have the musical number between Zach and Zendaya, where they were in the sky, they were on the floor, they were spinning up, they were going everywhere. It was beautiful, man. And they really love the silhouette lighting in this movie. Then you see PT basically sell out for a moment leaving the circus in the hands of everybody else, like still pursuing the money front of the circus, but going further, trying to get respect, because like I said, the relationship between the critic made him want more respect, because he thought he was making it until he saw the reviews and whatnot. The goddamn, I need to find somebody respectful, and he found the singer who wanted him, but he was loyal to his wife, then kissed him on stage as she said goodbye. And then, as that concert of his went down, there was this big fight at the circus that led into this big fire where Zach wanted to save Zendaya, ended up being the one having to be saved by Hugh Jackman, leaving him in the hospital. I mean, like, the production design, like I said, is amazing. The makeup, you know what I'm saying? Let's give it up for Zach for his hair still being proper while he was in the hospital, all burned up and shit. <laughs> I mean, like, it, it it was still on point, wherever it was. I mean, like, the brother and sister combo, you can see as in the picture, but I popped out. They're always together. The protective brother ain't gonna let his sister slide, you know what I'm saying? Then you have the, the classic circus motif, the big tent. I think this is where it originated. If this story is a true story, this is where it originated, because it seemed like P.T.'s original idea. And you see the last musical number, which was amazing. Like I said, you I mean, they put in a lot of money and everybody else was producing 21st century and all that. But, like, the lions did not re look real enough. The elephants did, and some stunts. Even there was a moment where you saw Zac Efron's face and it looked like he, it was a face mask a dancing, like when he was spinning on the floor. If you know the movie, you know what I'm talking about. If you've watched it enough times, then you get the last quote. Uh, the quote was touching. And basically, what I got from it is that the movie originated from this beautiful quote from P.T. I mean, like, if you don't know this movie, I'm not trying to... It is a spoiler review, but even if you watch the spoiler view, my spoiler review and you haven't watched the movie, I advise you to go watch the movie. Like, this quote runs deep. You know? Like, I want you, I don't know if I'm even going to put it there, because I want you to be like, when it's, when you see it, be on some, wow. You know what I'm saying? It was like satisfactory. Yeah, like I give this movie a solid 8 out of 10 I mean like this is a movie I'll see myself playing for my kids honestly to see them to embrace embrace their weirdness because I'm a weird kid I know that I mean most artistic people are but I mean like beautiful movie like I said